so getting started at, at Erie, the person that helped me the most was Lloyd Johnson. Uh, okay. Lloyd was an engineer, uh, and Lloyd uh, was a really broad-gauged guy. In fact, most of the engineers I've met are really, like Gil Levine and people like that. They're yeah. broad-gauged people, you know. Yeah. And uh, so uh, Lloyd, uh, he was interested in economics. He was interested in in uh, agronomy, engineering, the whole works. In fact, he set up the experiment station at Erie. Yeah. Uh, and so. Uh, I talked talk with Lloyd a lot, uh, and he, he was doing this survey in Central Luzon about engineering, about adoption, and so we started something called the Loop Survey, really based upon what Lloyd had set up. Every certain number of kilometer posts, we interviewed farmers. 1966, we started the Loop Survey. Every five years we did that, and they're still doing that same loop survey now. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I'm a great believer in longitudinal studies. You know, you look at something over time yeah. and how it changes and so forth right. like that. So, uh, Lloyd, uh, Lloyd was, uh, was great, and, and we, we even set up some experiments together. Well, you, first of all, you know, I had to get you know, some land to do experiments on, you know, and, and, and you know, an economist, he doesn't, do, they don't do that. You, you didn't know? need that, right? There was no, nothing for the economics department. No. No well, land. So, so I, I went, you know, in, in those days, you know, one of the advantages I had with Chandler and McClung, they were both Americans, and not only that, but Chandler was a New Englander. And, right. And, and, you know, his main accent was, it was like music to my ears, you know? <laughs> so uh, McClung read the book, but Chandler went by instinct. And, and, and Bob, uh, he, uh, uh, you know, he, I'd wait till McClung got out of town, and then I'd go see Bob, and I said, Bob, we need some, some plots to do experimental work. So we got some land, uh, and partly with Lloyd and partly with SK, or, or mostly with Lloyd. I got my agronomy, I think, from Lloyd, but we set up these, uh, some experiments, and then one day, uh, Bob came to my office. Now I told you, Bob always came to yeah. your office. He, we never went to. He never him. called you on the phone. And said, "Come no. in." He, he, and I've always remembered that. Everything I've done in my life, I always go to see the people I'm working yeah. for, yeah. Uh, and, I, and, and yeah. not the other way, or, or the people I'm working with, and not the other way around. But anyway, Bob came, and Bob always went out in the field, like seven or eight in the morning. He didn't have to look for money. So he was out in the experiment <laughs> station, you know? And so Bob, he said, well, uh, he came in one day, he had a visitor out in the field. He said, Randy, uh, uh, I, I checked. I, there, there was one plot out there that had a lot of weeds, a lot of weeds in it. And I checked and I said, that was yours. <laughs> and and uh, what are you doing? And I, and I said, well, Bob, that's my low input treatment. Uh, and uh, so he said, okay, and you know, later on, Ronnie Kaufman, you know, Ronnie is a plant breeder, yeah. he developed this idea of zip, lip, and hip. Zero input, low input, high input. But we never convinced the agronomists that this was an important thing to do. Right. Right. Anyway, Bob. And, and, and even though Ronnie invented that terminology, he never put in a breeding program where you, where you checked everything out under zip and under lip and under hip. That's it was right. all hip. That's right. Everything was high inputs. You tested the varieties under high input conditions, never mind about the zero or low input conditions. That's right. But yeah. you know, you're talking about Chandler. Yeah. I, I, I never worked at Erie when Chandler was the director. Yeah. But some of that stuff must have come through osmosis because uh, somehow either osmosis or uh, you know some management books that I read yeah because uh, later on this style of management was called uh, managing by walking around oh yeah yeah I never and it's it. written up in the, in the well, management literature well you know what's his name down in South America he wrote the book on managing yeah yeah uh, yeah. uh John Nickel Nick wrote, wrote a book yeah. on yeah. Uh, management in the CGIR system yeah. but uh, um, I can't remember who the guru was of management by walking around, yeah, but it really right. works. Yeah, that's right. And 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 I, you know, that's basically how I did my my yeah, management. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing is, uh, you know, this business about going to the plots early in the morning. I used to get out there, leave around seven o'clock in the morning on a motorcycle, ride out to the plots, and just kind of ride around and see who was out there. 
and maybe Ronnie would be out there or Harold Kaufman or one of those guys, and you get off, you know, and you'd stop. Yeah. And you'd, you'd say, well, what, what's what this? What, what, are are you, what are you doing, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's a great way to learn what they were doing yeah. and make contact with them so that they yeah. you knew who you were, they knew you were interested in yeah. what they were doing. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, of course, the other way, of course, is you have to have coffee with them every morning. Well, that's so right. You had to listen to all these people complaining about what the, you know, every discipline was doing, so you learn that way as well.